Hello and welcome to Gearhead 704. I'm Matt and we have a video we have not had on the channel for a little while now. We have a how-to video today. Several months back we did a couple of brake videos, how to service your brakes, and Matt mentioned rebuilding the caliper in that video, but we didn't need to cover it in that video. Well guys, today we are. We have this triple white convertible that we've been doing some work here on the channel on. Uh, you can see I had a recent video on it. Uh, there's the engine right there. Engine's been pulled out. But we are going to focus because this happens to need a caliper rebuild. We thought we'd go ahead and cover it. I had a few requests for this. Hopefully it's helpful to you guys. Uh, so let me grab Matt. He is the co-owner here at Fox Mustang Restoration. And he's going to walk us through how to rebuild a caliper. Hopefully this helps you guys. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. Yep, so I got Matt here. And uh, Matt, I kind of filled him in on what we're doing today. But uh, let's go ahead and I guess start from square one for one thing. I have never done this. So just pretend you're teaching me, I guess. But we've done this before. So yeah, what's, uh, I know we get the wheel and tire off. Where are we at so far on this? It looks like uh, the brake hub and stuff have already been removed. Yeah, well, the rotor's been removed. Obviously, the engine and the K-member and the suspension's gone. All right, Matt, so I told him we're gonna rebuild a caliper today, but uh, let's start with why. Why do we? Why would you know you need to rebuild the caliper? What you gotta be worried about on the caliper is basically the piston inside the caliper. That uh, The piston pushes against the pads whenever you hit the brake pedal to stop the car. So that piston needs to be able to slide in and out very easily with no restrictions, no dragging. One of the things I do for a brake inspection, when I pull the wheel off with the caliper mounted onto the rotor, I'll use a little screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, kind of compress the piston a little bit. The compress is nice and easy, we're good, don't need to worry about it. If it doesn't move at all, it seized, definitely needs to be rebuilt. If it drags or if it's like uh, very resistant, it should also be rebuilt at that time because these seals, uh, they are made of a certain type of rubber that is good for brake fluid. But over time, the brake fluid becomes contaminated. It can affect the rubber. And just being submerged in the brake fluid for 30 years is going to affect it. So it could start to gum up and drag on the piston. And that's very important that that piston releases because if it doesn't release or if it's dragging and you hit the brakes when you let off, if it's dragging, it will not release. That means that you still have a little bit of pressure onto the brake pads. That symptom is something that can cause one brake pad to wear faster than the other. Bring us up to how we got to this point or what you would have to remove if you're not removing the entire Right, <laughs> so know. yeah, simply to do the caliper, the only thing you really have to remove is the two caliper pin bolts. To take it off, we have to remove the caliper banjo bolt here. This is obviously the bolt that holds the hose to the caliper. And before I do that, I'm gonna want to pinch this line off. And this is so when I take this off, I just don't have brake fluid everywhere. Now this is not something I would do on a hose that I'm gonna reuse. A lot of times uh, that is considered okay, but being this is an old original hose and it's probably already starting to break down, the chances are if you would compress it uh, to pinch it, you're gonna end up breaking the line apart inside and that can cause you further problems down the road. Uh, this line is getting replaced, so I'm gonna go ahead and pinch it just to make it sure it's gonna be a little bit cleaner of a job. If I wasn't replacing this, I actually would not pinch it. Okay, if it's a good brake line to reuse, you wouldn't wanna do that. Correct, go. it's a loud tool part, just a 10 millimeter. There we go. And while off, the caliper's off. So now we can go on, we'll move over there and rebuild it over there. Okay, Matt, so what we've done here is move things away from the car. You didn't want to get brake fluid on the car, obviously, right. so that's why we're moving away from the car. But And so this is everything we need, though? Yep, this is everything you need to rebuild a caliper, including the rebuild kit. Well, short of everything, but, you know, clean and soap and brake fluid, but... Uh, as far as tools, this is it. It's really easiest if you have an air supply and a blow gun to get the piston out. Uh, you could try pulling it out, but if it's seized, you really need the air pressure to get it out. I got the pick to be able to pull the seals out, and I've got the hammer actually to not hammer anything, but to use as a stop for the piston. Piston out. All I'm gonna do is the hole that the banjo bolt goes into where I'm actually gonna pump air in there, which will push the piston out, which is exactly what the high brake fluid does. Uh, but since there's nothing here, it'll pop all the way out and I will actually put my hammer in there to stop the piston from slamming into the end of the caliper. So I went and got a different hammer with a thicker handle. And the reason why is this piston seems to be seized in here a little bit. So I'm gonna have to use a little bit more air pressure uh, to be able to break it loose and get it out. So I wanted to go with a thicker handle. And the reason why, with the increased air pressure, that piston is gonna come out a lot faster. At this distance, the piston will come out of the caliper and it could shatter the caliper and bounce out of the way. We don't want that to happen. So I'm using either a rubber handle hammer or a wood handle hammer. And this is just because it's softer material. It shouldn't break anything. So we're gonna go ahead and pop this thing out. It's probably gonna be pretty loud. Ready? Uh -huh. There we go. Oh, it's still stuck in there pretty good. So I'm gonna turn the handle the other way and finish this up. There we 
There we go. Yeah, I heard it come out with some force there. Yep. This car sat for 10 years, so you can see to where the seal has actually started sticking to the piston. And by blowing it out, part of that seal actually came apart and stuck to the piston. So this caliper was working barely at all. Now at this point, we've got the piston out. We're gonna pull our, seal, our old seals out. Here's the dust boot. The seal that seals to the piston is actually inside the caliper. So I'm gonna use my pick, pull that out like that. And the reason we wanna do a brake flush, if you look in there, there's a lot of debris. Mm -hmm. All this stuff that moves around, this is all debris. And most of this is rubber particles. It's gonna be rubber particles from the seal, and it's also gonna be rubber particles from the seal in the proportion valve, the master cylinder, and possibly even the lining of the brake hose. That is a perfect example of why I don't pinch brake hoses that I'm gonna reuse. So right now, the caliper's disassembled. We're gonna go clean these two pieces up in the sink with some soap, and we'll come back and reassemble it. All right, Matt has got her all cleaned up, but one of the things I did wanna mention really quick is we are saving some money here because we are rebuilding the caliper versus buying a new one. And I think what they run maybe six or seven times more expensive, right? As far as the caliper rebuild kit goes, yeah, because the caliper rebuild kit is literally just the dust boot and the rubber seal. They run anywhere between three to six bucks. So you're gonna save a bunch of money doing it this way, and it doesn't look like so far it's that complicated. Nope. Let's show them that piston here. So this is after taking it to the sink and just scrubbing it down really good. Just a little bit of elbow grease. So. Yeah, a little bit of elbow grease. Got that nice and clean. And the same thing with the bore on the caliper that the piston goes into. Just gave that a good cleaning as well. Got it nice and clean, and all the grooves, like the groove that the uh, that the piston seal goes into and the groove in the piston where the dust boot goes into they, a lot of gunk's going to build up in there so i've got a little just like brush that i use and scrub all that stuff out because you got to make sure it's nice and clean and for reassembly very very important part is you make sure that all of the water that you use to clean this thing up is out of the caliper no water in the piston nothing inside water immediately breaks down brake fluid it's kind of the enemy of brake fluid so when you go to reassemble this you got to make sure it's 100 percent dry so i'm just getting a little bit of brake fluid here to lubricate everything it's not dielectric grease not this time <laughs> it's weird Matt. i know all right make sure you get the groove that the piston goes in or the piston seal goes into and you can see that groove so here's the the cylinder wall or the bore wall of the caliper and you've got this big notch cut in that goes all the way around it's what this seal, it's what this seal goes into. And we're gonna do the same thing in the seal. We're gonna get it nice and lubricated with brake fluid here, all the way around. And then just simply pop that seal into that groove. Make sure it doesn't twist. It is a square seal, so it goes in in one way. It's not a round O-ring, so it definitely matters if it's twisted or spun around. You just wanna make sure it's nice and square in there. And putting it together, because you are working with the caliper, when you do clean it, make sure you clean the outside of the caliper really, really well to get any built on dirt and grime off, because as I'm working with it, if there was any stuck there, I would be putting it into there. And you know, just like any seal, if you get a contaminant on the seal, it could leak or, or seize up and you're back to square one. Next, we're gonna put in the dust boot. This is not a hydraulic seal. Seal. It is nothing more than a dust boot. And there's a second groove on the caliper right here, the little deeper of a groove. That's what this lip on the seal goes into. This is the bottom of the seal or this portion of the seal that goes into the caliper. So I will flip that around. And this one could be a little tricky because you can't see it where it pops in. You just got to kind of feel for it. But once it pops in, you should be able to pull up on the skirt there and it not pop out. So now that we got the dust boot on, we're going to put the piston in. And again, we're gonna need a little bit of brake fluid. I'm gonna go a little heavier on this one. Get it nice and covered. Not on the inside, it doesn't do anything there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the piston where it's trying to go into the caliper bore, but the dust boot's in the way right now. Now that we got the dust boot installed, I'm gonna go ahead and lubricate the piston. Just use a little bit of brake fluid, get it nice and wet all over. Now this taper on the bottom of the piston is actually gonna come into play while installing the piston. The square rubber seal in there would not go over the piston if that was squared off. So that is tapered. So when we put the piston in, that seal will expand and then go over the piston. So that's a pretty crucial part. So with that in mind, if there's any contaminants that's built up on there, and originally this one did have it, I had to brush it off. Make sure you get that off. The piston has to be perfectly clean, just like this one here. So we'll go ahead and take the piston. Bottom of the cup portion, we're gonna put onto the bellow. Now, obviously the bellow is preventing the piston from going into the caliper right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of hold that piston in there with my fingers a little bit. I'm not gonna go full pressure. This thing, you can use it like a gas pedal, a little bit of air, a lot of air, so you don't wanna use a lot. And what we're gonna do, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to blow the bellow up over the piston. There we 
There we go. By doing that, putting a little bit of air pressure in there, I opened the bellow up and I was able to get it all the way around the piston. So now the piston's installed into the bellow, but it's still loose from the caliper. This is why we lubricate that ring as well. Get it squared and just get it lined up. There we go, slides right in. Now that's a rebuilt caliper. Test the action. There we go, a little bit of air pressure, it blows out. I should be able to push this in by hand. Yep, sure enough. Just like that. That's the operation you want. And that's a rebuild caliper. The only other thing I would suggest is the little rubber, little rubber boots for the caliper pin bolt slides. Those are only a couple bucks and they just pop right out, pop new ones in and that's literally 100% rebuilt caliper. So it should slide and we should have even, even pad wear now, right? Correct. Okay. Yep. But there you go guys, another how-to video here on the channel. There is a playlist linked down below if you wanna see more how-tos. But we do like doing these from time to time here on the channel and when I'm at Fox Resto in particular, Got of course grab Doc Fox knowledge when we can. So anyway, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button. It helps me out a lot. If you're stopping in for the first time, please subscribe because we're gonna do more how-to content here on the channel, definitely. And that's pretty much it. We'll see you here next time on Gearhead 704. So you could shoot air at me <laughs> when it's mounted. Yeah, let me lead you in differently. I, yeah. I all this up. But we do like doing these from time to time. Time to time. And please subscribe because we're gonna do more how con to how con to.